Yeah, it's me, the master of the Tornado DDT Fuego Del So, and you are watching and listening to the Three Count Podcast. <laughs> Welcome everybody now to another great ring, edition ring. of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering Ring. I am your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. You can call me your Sherpa, and just like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. And that's why it's never about me, it's about who's entering the ring. And tonight, our person comes to us from SWF trifecta and the world of unpredictable wrestling he is the man the aerial assassin call him brando lee hey hey how you doing doing good man yo first uh just thank you for coming on that's always gonna be first things of course it's happy to be here that yo so we met at swf and what caught my attention was how flawlessly you are just like flying in a ring, right? So I'm just curious, man. Like, how did you develop the style that you have today? Um, well, when I'm wrestling, I like to think about when I was a child and what I wanted to see watching the wrestlers, like in sitting in the stands. Oh, I want to see them do this. Or I want to see them do that. So I try to tap back into that version of myself and put it in the ring. So to make these kids happy. Bad. No, that's awesome though, man. Cause that's at the end of the day, man, like a lot of people always talk about like you wrestle for like, you, you know, everybody's like you wrestling for this person or that person. But ultimately, man, it's about the kids. Like we want to see their faces like light up like the 4th of July whenever ultimately. we're training. Yes. Bet. Well, my first question for you, man, is who is Brando Lee? Brando Lee is, that's very tough. You know, it's, it's hard, hard to, I guess, categorize myself, you know. I guess you'd have to ask about me in a way. Um, I'm really just myself turned up to the highest power. And really, that's it. There's no extreme uh, gimmick, if you will. There's no, it's just me, really. Bad, man. Well, I'm curious then, like, how did you get into the sport? Well, I've been watching all my life, um, thanks to my dad. My dad put me on to wrestling. He's been watching all his life, and I told him I wanted to do it, and he took me to Brooklyn when I was about 14. He took me to Brooklyn to, to meet uh, the unpredictable Johnny Rods, and I wanted to sign up and train with him, but I was too young. So I would just hang around and go to the shows until I was old enough to actually participate. And then from there, the rest is history. Bad, man. Yeah. And you've had kind of like a, a unique, like travel, right? Cause I feel like you've been in for like a long time, but you really you've been kind of in for like a short period of time, but you've done a lot in that short right. period of time. Mm. A lot as in, um, at, at rods or after rods. Well, like everything all together, just like, it just seems like you're, yeah, artwork. it's been four years. Uh, yeah, I was like, your artwork has definitely it's shown. It was like, the time flies, you know, four years. Like, I, I still remember my first ever match and, and being nervous and having those jitters. And I still get those jitters today. I never want them to go away. I always say when, when the jitters go away, you're no, no longer having fun. Right. It is, it is, it is unique. Cause like, everybody has, like, their thing, like, their, their little vice that they end up going through, like, right before their matches. Like, for me, like... I get so nervous. Like I apologize to everybody. Like, at, like before, like we get, we go and shake hands and stuff. We talk, and I'll go and talk with my person, right? And we'll talk to a match over. And yeah. I apologize to everybody after that because I don't want people to feel like I'm ignoring them, but I'm just like so zoned in because if I'm not, uh -huh. like I get, I get mad nervous. Yes. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't I'm sorry, guys. Uh -huh. like, I do want to come join in your guys' inside joke that you're telling right now, and I'll probably laugh at it too. But I'm just so locked yeah. in over here. <laughs> like I just, I feel so bad. Yes. I don't have have um like a pre match ritual or anything. I just I do a lot of push ups. I don't know push ups. The, the, first of all, they they make your body look good. They pump you up, and it it takes my mind 
off the nerves. You know, right. it gives me something to do. Like I'm standing behind the curtain, I'll do push-ups till my music hits and then I go out. Nice. Well, that's good though, because like you said, you just get like, you look jacked and then you're just out there just having so much fun. And then of course for yeah. you, you know, I mean, I watched your guys' match at SWF and you guys were just all over the place, man. Like flips and you guys were, you know, you're working yes. and then there's parts where like things are slowing down. Then you guys like hit into like overdrive and it's just like the, the pacing. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, dang, this thing is like all over the place. And like I said, man, just watching you guys all work. I was like, I got to get all these guys on the show. <laughs> <laughs> is this the 200th episode I, I heard the 200th episode is coming up is this it this is not the 200th episode <laughs> oh okay i know so many people are like trying to figure out like <laughs> who's gonna be that 200th guest and uh yeah it's yeah yeah it's a trip to think yeah. that we've been at 200 like you know we we talk about it a lot but like we started mm-hmm. the show back in may of last year so to be tripping close okay. to 200 is yeah it's wild that's great man keep it up i appreciate it so assuming that your four year stint right like you yes. you're a high flyer i'm assuming you probably have one of these but what's the worst bump you've taken oh the worst bump i've taken the worst bump i've taken actually didn't come at a show it actually was in training i did a a regular frog splash on the off the top rope onto somebody and they like flinched and their hip dug into my bladder and I was peeing blood for two weeks um so that would have to be the worst bump I've ever taken and it's funny it's actually me doing the move so yeah that's it yeah that sounds like it sucks (laughs) (laughs) I really try to stay off the high the high uh, the top rope I really I just yeah if not that it freaks me out because like I've been like working a lot more on top. I just, I don't want to hit moves off the top rope. Like I don't even want to do elbow drops. I'm just like, nope, I'm good. I'm good right mm-hmm. here on the ground. <laughs> yes. But I envy everybody. If you're not comfortable, like, you should yeah, stay off. Yeah. And I, and I envy people who are like, so like, they like walk on ropes, like a Phoenix, right. Who just like walks on the ropes and like has no issue. Yeah. Right. And it's, and it's funny too. Cause like when I train and stuff, like I'm doing like four fifties, and like mm-hmm. moon salts and teasing that I can I can I can do a shooting star press. I just choose not to do it. But I like tease it, but I'm just like, right. nah man, I don't want to land on people. Like <laughs> it just freaks me out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one time, man? You you pull an RVD and you land your, your shin on somebody's throat and like that's it. It's just kind of Yeah. Out, it's terrible. That was triple H, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it freaks me out. Sometimes I'm just like, I'll punish people. I'm just not trying to end people. But I value the people who can uh-huh. do that stuff so smoothly and they land perfectly every single time. So just a great body position, man. It's awesome. Yeah, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. You know, when you first start it, you, you land in awkward positions. Sometimes you land too high on the guy, too low on the guy. But And keep your eyes open. Look at the guy's stomach area. That's where you want to land every time. Bet. You know what? That's great advice. I'm definitely going to start implementing that when I go back over and start training well not that i don't stop, not that I stop the training, but yeah the next time i go to hit another another one i'm just gonna think about that too <laughs> <laughs> so seeing that you like you know like again we're talking about like worse i'm just kind of curious like who's hit you the hardest and if you don't want to drop names who's hitting yeah if you don't want to drop names it's fine <laughs> i i actually will drop a name um who's hit me the hardest would have to be jocko He's with a faction called the Takeover. Mm. He struck me in the ear and and ruptured my eardrum. Yeah, I had to go to the hospital for that, and and they they poured something in my ear, and it was good after a couple of weeks, but I, I couldn't hear out of that ear, and it was the first move of the match. This happened a couple of years ago. Oh, <laughs> the match started with a right hand, and he just popped me right in my eardrum, and I couldn't hear. Oh damn! For the rest of the match, so. Oh, that would be so rough. This, and then you know because you're balanced too like mm-hmm. you're trying to like keep things together and your ears like ring and stuff Balance. yeah yeah i get it so all right man well since we're talking about hardest hits let's talk about what happens after the match right because everybody knows mm-hmm. like it's something i've started to figure out too is that a lot of wrestlers don't eat before shows but i'm very curious what is it okay. that's your post-match meal that you gotta have my post-match meal my post-match meal 
is usually cereal. No specific type of cereal, just cereal. Like I don't eat throughout the day. Or I'll, I'll maybe eat crackers because I don't want to be like, you know, drained of my energy. So I'll eat crackers to keep me awake. But I don't really eat meals throughout the day on the show. And then after the show, I just go home and have a bowl of cereal and watch my match back, which is cereal at about midnight. It's funny. Okay. That's not bad. Though. That's a great choice, though. Like, I, I, I like that idea. I know for me, it's like... Mm-hmm. I, it's whatever at Wawa's or Sheets, like wherever we stop, I'm always like, yo, let me get like a cheeseburger or something. <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's yeah, my advice. It, so I don't stop anywhere for some reason. That's awesome though, man. So moving over from probably much your post-match snack, I'm just kind of curious, like in the time that you have spent in the sport, what's been the hardest lesson that you've had to learn? The hardest lesson I had to learn and I'm still learning today is when to slow down. You know, I, I think that's a, I, I hear that often. Like the veterans will tell me, we should slow down here, slow down there, know when to timing and speed, you know, when to pick it up and when to slow it down. That That's the hardest thing. But um, other than that, no, no, no hard lessons for me yet. Hopefully none in the near future, but that's really it. It's, it sounds small, but it's very important. The timing of, of things. Oh yeah. Putting a match together and like finding all the places and then like feeling the crowd energy. Like I could definitely understand like about like pacing and time. Mm-hmm. So we're going to jump right into my other favorite question. I love to ask people, what kind of advice would you give to up and coming wrestlers? Yes. The advice I would give to up and coming wrestlers would be Don't stop practicing. Like in the first three months of, of training for me, I wanted to stop. I loved wrestling my whole life and I knew I wanted to do it. But the first, when I first took my first few bumps and, you know, the first day is like you go home with headaches and it's not what you think it would be. Like it's not play wrestling with your friends, how it was growing up. It's very different. So when you start it, it's like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And I kind of want to stop. But when you, if you keep going and you pass that, that's when you, it gets addicting and you want to keep going. So don't stop going to training no matter how, how hard it is. You know, it is so funny because, like, um, you're right. It's like there's levels to it, right? So even just, like, as a kid, like, you're playing around. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just, like, throwing these wild punches, but you're, like, yeah. missing by, like, you know, eight inches. And your friends are, like, selling, yeah. like, they're getting punched. But then, like, you even work, like if you work like in the un- the forbidden zone, right? <laughs> like I remember for me, like working in that mm. area, I was like, I don't want to, mm. I don't want to bump. Like, I just don't want to fall on my back. It was just something I didn't want to do. And I remember for like three, four months, like I just yeah. like, didn't do it. And people were like, oh, and I would sell like into a turnbuckle or something and then fall down or sell into the ropes or something. And, right. people were, and I just didn't want to bump. And it sucks uh, to throw yeah. yourself yeah and then like when I went and finally started getting trained on how to bump properly and like stuff like that then I wanted to do it all the time <laughs> mm-hmm. I find myself like you become immune to it you don't even feel it anymore right when I uh when I took my first like real dojo bump and I was just like I don't know six feet in the air just lying straight on my back mm-hmm. like people were just like all right well I guess we know what Cliff's favorite bump is. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. But I'm just curious, man, because like you said, you've been in for a little bit. So I just need one do and one don't of the locker room. One do and one don't of the locker room. Ha, ah, that's tough. Um. One do would definitely be, especially if it's a new locker room, introduce yourself to everyone there, shake everyone's hand. That's a do. Um, one don't would be, oh man, this is tough. One don't. And I know there's like a thousand don'ts of the locker room, but I, I just can't think of one right now. I got nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh man, I'll, I'll tell what, when it's what would like most popular. Uh, oh my my okay, so my do right is do introduce yourself right to everybody because it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's person building rings, the promoter, mm-hmm. the booker, 
your yes. friends, everybody. Just say hi to everybody and just like, right. Just, just right? Let's just be a good person. The one don't I hear all the time, which is something that I, I genuinely repeat back. Don't leave your gear in your gear bag after a show. Wash your stuff. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Wash them because you'll regret it the next show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that or uh, another one like, uh, like do put on deodorant. Don't be the smelly guy. <laughs> of course. Of course. You know, hygiene is very important. <laughs> hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> and don't be a dick that's the other one i hear a lot too <laughs> oh yeah that's that's easy yeah. that's that that's, that's a no-brainer you know <laughs> bet well those are like really like all my hard-hitting questions but we do got to get into the second best segment of the three count podcast people ask me what's the first i'd sell all time it's the red dogs power rankings that you can find every sunday on our debate show but this is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. Mr. Brando, this is how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast. Whatever is the first answer, that's your answer. All right. So we're going to put on the imaginary timer for added pressure. Sure. Bing. All and right. here we go. Smack down a raw. Raw. Favorite movie. Polar Express. Hey, it is the holiday season. That's perfect. Yes. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Favorite color? Spider-Man. Red. Okay, Spider-Man it is. I like that. I like that. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Here's a tough one. Favorite catchphrase? Favorite catchphrase? The power of young glory compels you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Dogs or cats? Cats. Okay. Favorite podcast? The one, two, three, the three count podcast. That's my favorite podcast. <laughs> right. Nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. I want to see the SWF champion, Mantequilla, on this podcast. Mantequilla is definitely the dude that I want to see on this podcast as well. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on the show, favorite curse word. You want to know something? What's that? I'm 20 two years old and I don't curse so I have none bet and that's okay because that's what we have sometimes <laughs> sometimes you don't need a curse word to like say what you got to say listen not at all in 1960 for there the was... kids keep it pg <laughs> yeah right right well like what was it uh George Carlin right he did a special um he was a comedian he did a special back in the 60s and he called it the seven dirty words, right? But as of 1960, there was 399,993 words and only seven of them were considered dirty. So like okay, things you couldn't say on TV. So yeah, if you, if you can find another word, use that word. <laughs> right. But that is all the questions I have for you. So the only thing I need from you now is to let all of our viewers and our listeners know where they can find you. You, you can find me at New Year's Retribution on January 15th, SWF New Year's Retribution in New Egypt, New Jersey. And follow me on Instagram at younglory underscore. That. And there you have it. That's it. So you know what that means. We got to take this home because this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering a Ring. And like I said, I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. And just like every good Sherpa, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. So that's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring, and you see him right next to me. He is the man, the myth, the legend, 
Brando Lee, the young legend at that, and he's on the rise. So you guys be on the lookout for him and tune into the next episode and be there. Or you just wait for this episode to end. You wait for that outro and you choose another episode to listen to. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys. And we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.